and carbon and how it interacts with other carbons and how it interacts with other atoms. So if you watched the video last night, one of the things about carbon is this, right? You can, uh, if you have a carbon, a single carbon, right? It's got four bonds. That's a hallmark, right? Always four bonds, right? And it can also have different geometries or different shapes. So a carbon like this with four bonds to it is going to be, it's going to be the shape of a tetrahedral. I'm sorry. And let me let me minimize this and get this out of the way. Right, it's going to be in the shape of a tetrahedral. Right, but the beautiful thing about carbon is that it's such a versatile atom. You can do so many different things with it. Right, so not only can it form these four. And these are all what we call single or sigma bonds. I right, can form those four sigma bonds. And can somebody tell me why it wants to make four bonds anyway? It's something you learned in uh, G Chem part one. One of the first things you learned. Is it to fill its shell? To fill its octet. That's right. Everything mm -hmm. wants, to follow, it wants to follow that octet rule, right? So it wants to have those eight electrons around it. Like trying to match up to the closest noble gas. Isn't that what you learned in G Chem part one? All atoms want to match the closest noble gas to them. <laughs> right? All right. So it can form those four, those four sigma bonds and fill its octet but carbon is versatile, right? You can do a lot more with, with, with it than just forming single bonds. So let's say I have a carbon like this. Just comment. My, my, my hotspot is a little slow, right? Let's look at this carbon right here. Does it still have four bonds to it? Right. Yes, yes. You have those are sigma bonds. And then if you look at the bond here, this is what we call a double bond. All right? The fact that it's a double bond means that it counts twice, right? So for this carbon that's highlighted in pink, it's got two sigma bonds to it. It has a double bond, which consists of one sigma. I'm going to keep sigma red. And then the other bond, the blue bond, is what we call a pi bond. I'm going to talk about how you make pi bonds and all that stuff, too, in a minute. All right? so you have four bonds to carbon. Two, uh, three of those are sigma bonds. One of them is a pi bond. So every double bond is made up of what? Help me out. A sigma and a pi. Sigma and a pi. Every double bond is made up of, is constructed the same way. A sigma bond and a pi bond. And it doesn't matter that the double bond is between carbon, right? Because you can also have a, a scenario where you have a, like an ME, right? That double bond is the same. It's a sigma and a pi. You can be, you can have a carbonyl, right? That double bond is a sigma and a pi. Let me give you the name too, because might well throw some functional groups in here while we at it. <laughs> so that's a carbonyl, and this is what we call an ME. Right? All those different functional groups. And a carbon carbon double bond, we call it an alkene. All right, I'm kind of compressing this because I want to. I know we got a the semester is the same length, but it's going to go by quick because we don't. We just. I'm just having a hard time wrapping my mind around the fact that after Thanksgiving break we're done. So I'm going to compress this and kind of hit the topics as they come up, and then after we get the foundation down, then we're going to you know, push through the rest of the material, all right? 
So you got double bond that's made up of a sigma and a pi. And every carbon is always gonna have four bonds to it. That's something that you should not forget. If it's a carbon and it's neutral, it should have four bonds to it. The only exception is what's is something called a carbene, but we'll talk about that later. All right, so you can have a double bond. It can also make triple bonds, right? So this carbon right here, how many bonds does it have to it? Four. Four. Always got four bonds. You can count them up. The triple bond counts three times. The bond to hydrogen counts once, so it's got four bonds. But if you look at it, right, it only has two groups around it, right? The H over here is a group, and the carbon over here is a group. If we're looking at the one that's highlighted in pink. <laughs> so you got two groups, but four bonds, right? This is a this carbon, this type of carbon, when it has a triple bond to it, we call it an alkyne, right? But the but the the basics stay the same. You you always want to fill the octet rule. So you have a triple bond, and that triple bond, let me make that, let me clear this up too. I'm gonna go back and use the same concept we used earlier. So our sigma bonds were red. So you got one sigma and then the pi bonds, let me make those in blue, all right? So every triple bond is made up of one sigma and two pi bonds, right? So you, so you have, here you have a sigma bond, right? And then up in here, you have a sigma bond and then two blue bonds are both pi bonds. All right, any questions about that? So a triple bond is made up of what? One sigma and two pi's. Are you following? Yes, no? Yes. Maybe? Yes. Yeah. All right, so good. So we got Carbon, we know it's special. It can do a lot of special stuff. I'm gonna talk more about uh, how it can make chains and rings and all that stuff in a minute. But I wanna go back <clears throat> and talk about another aspect of this, uh, these carbons. And that is the fact that if you see a carbon with four bonds to it, it should, it should that's really counterintuitive, right? If it's got four bonds, because let me go, let me, Let's talk about that. If it, if carbon, we think about the electron configuration of carbon. Anybody remember that electron configuration? What is what is the electron configuration of an atom? Anybody? Don't I just just jump in? I know it's Friday, but feel free to speak your mind. Is that the one where you have to do like the sp and all that? Yeah, yeah. So the electron configuration is basically how the electrons are arranged in the orbitals, right? Right. And so remember from if you remember from GCHEM, you have S orbitals, P orbitals, D orbitals and F orbitals. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. yes. And remember, the S is shaped like a sphere. You remember that? I'm gonna do my little my little shading right here so you'll know it's a sphere. You remember that? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. What about the P? What's the shape of a P? Anybody remember? <clears throat> is it a dumbbell? Dumbbell shape. That's right. See, starting off on the right foot. That's good. It's gonna be a great semester. Even though we're in cyberspace, it's going to still going to be good, right? It's, it's shaped like a dumbbell. Now, what do you know about the P as far as the uh, plus one, zero, minus, like the M sub L number? How many, how many P orbitals are there? Three. Three, good. So you have, uh, I'm going to put that down here. Px, is that right? 
Mm -hmm. the, the, the M sub L tells you how how it's pointing on in in space, right? So PX, PY, and then PZ. Yes. Yes. And each one of those P's can hold two electrons because every orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then for D, how many D's do you have? There's a lot. Of, I'm not going to draw the D's out because there's a lot of shapes. But I can draw the P's. And then, and then PZ will be kind of like that, like pointed out at you. All right. How many D's do you have? Ten. Ten electrons total. So you got five D's, right? Mm -hmm. DX, DY, that's a B. This Friday. DY and then DZ. Is that right? And then DX squared minus Y squared and then DZ squared. Those are your D orbitals. And each one can hold two electrons. Right, and then F, how many? Seven? Yep. Yeah, seven. So if you remember <clears throat> from GChem, right, all of these orbitals are organized in a certain way, right? What's it called? Anybody remember? Shells. They right. call shells. Is it the, yeah, you're right. They're organized in shells, that's right. But it's called an alkyl buildup. You remember that? One S. Come on, finger. Two S, two P, three S, three P, four S, three D, so on and so forth. Do y'all remember that that little uh, organization of the shells? Yes. 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 Yeah. Is it all coming back to you? Uh -huh. Let me do some magic. Let me hear it. Here, have some tea. Take a sip, it'll all come back. Yeah, so the alpha buildup tells you <coughs> how the orbitals are organized in any atom, right? And that's how we determine what the electron configuration is. And each of these can hold two electrons in S, right? For P, you can have a maximum of six. Is that right? Because each P has two and it's three P's. So you can have a maximum of six. Mm hmm Yep. It's going to all come back, I promise, by uh, next month. It's going to be there. And you can have 10 in the D orbital, so on and so forth. The beautiful thing about carbon is that you stop here. Right? What's the? Somebody tell me what the atomic number of carbon is. Is it six? Is it six? Yeah, it's six, right? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> you said sure. Yeah, it's six. <laughs> Let's just move on, sir. Hurry up. All right, so it's six. So how? Do, what is the electron configuration for carbon? What would it look like? 1s2, is that right? Yeah. 2s2, because that's, I got to fill up the, each energy level, I have to fill it before I can put electrons in the next orbital. Is that right? What's that called? Anybody remember from GChem? So you, if you slept through, the last part again. Say again. Oh yeah. So, so I have each energy level. And every time I go up an energy level, I have to fill up the energy level that I'm in before I can move to the next. Right, mm -hmm. so I can't put one electron in one S and then one in two S. If I have ten electrons, I got to put two in the one S, two in two S, and so on and so forth. So what's left? If, if, if carbon has an atomic number of six, what's left? If I got one S and two S, how many electrons do I have left? Two. Two. Yeah, let's do a little math here. Two P two. Is that right? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So 2P what? Two. Two. Now, that's great. Hopefully everybody is on the boat. Let me see. We got 35 people in here, and I think we got more than 35 enrolled, but we're gonna, it's okay. I'm going to figure out a way to chop this 
section up too, so that we can have less people per session. Cause I think you, you get more engagement that way. Um, so this is, so this is my electron configuration for carbon. Are y'all following that? Yeah. What's the problem with that? Let, let's think about this now. Let's go back up here to our examples. We're going right back to here. How many bonds does that carbon have? Four. Four bonds. How many bonds does this carbon have that's highlighted in pink? Four. 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 Okay. How many bonds does this carbon have right here highlighted in pink? Four. Four. That, does that make sense to you based on what you know about how bonds are formed? Yes. It does? How, um, how do we make, how, okay, so let, let's, let's oh, back up. Sure. How do we make bonds? Uh, by sharing electrons. Sharing electrons. Let's put that in here. Bonds are made by sharing. If I could spell, I'd be doing good. I need to make, I might take my PhD. Sharing electrons, right? Which electrons? The valence electrons. Valence. The valence electrons, the ones that are furthest away from the nucleus, because when you, the closer you get to the nucleus, the more attraction there is between the electrons, which are negative, and the nucleus, which is positive, right? So you're talking about using those valence electrons to make bonds. All right. Do the, can't do, so when we talk about the valence electrons, why is it that the noble gases don't really make bonds? Their valence electrons are already filled up. They're already, all the, not only is the valence full, but all your electrons are paired up, right? And so if you, if you, you can't share an electron that's already in an orbital that's paired, right? Unless you're doing, unless you're doing like a reaction between two atoms and you donating a pair of electrons to some empty space, you can't share them if they already paired up. They have to be unpaired to be shared, right? Unless you're sharing both at the same time. But you know, and I know that when we make a bond between two atoms, let's say between two carbons, it's not two electrons coming, well, it could be, but in, in, in for the sake of simplicity, we're gonna say that we're gonna take these two electrons here and share them by overlapping these orbitals. That's how carbon makes bonds, by the way. Write that down somewhere. That carbon makes bonds by orbitals overlapping. That's how carbon shares electrons. It overlaps orbitals with other atoms. Orbital overlap is how we make bonds with carbon. All right? When you take those two orbitals and you overlap them, they add together and you share the bond, share the electrons between the atoms. All right, because every or let me let me back up. <clears throat> what is an orbital? Can somebody tell me? Is it real? Is it tangible or is it not real? Isn't it real? We just can't see it. Well, I would, so you can't see it, you're right about that. But it's not, it's not a, a thing that you can touch either. It's actually an equation, right? It's an equation, a graph of, an, of the equation of where an electron can be in space. That's what an orbital is. That's why they got different shapes because every orbital is a graph of the path of an electron around the nucleus, all right? So, I'm gonna write that down for you. So they're not tangible. It's a graph. Let me move this up. It's a graph of the equation of the path of an electron. So the electron path. That's what an orbital is. All right, everybody okay with that? Yes. Yes, sir. All right. So when I take, that's why I said when you overlap them, they add together because you can add equations together, right? To, and, and 
if it has all positive parts, then it's going to increase. If it has negative parts, they'll cancel out, so on and so forth. All right, so when we think about carbon and it overlapping with those unpaired electrons, how many unpaired electrons do I have <coughs> if I look at the electron configuration for carbon? Let's think about it now. Are there any unpaired electrons here in the S orbital? In the 2S, because this is the valence shell, right? Two is, high, is a higher energy level than one, so that's my valence shell for carbon. It's the second energy level. So if one in 1S2, how does that look? So let me draw this out. And don't worry about it if you didn't write everything, because it's all recorded, and I'll chop these videos up and post them to YouTube. So I got 1S with two electrons, 2s with two electrons notice they're both paired up it's very difficult to unpair a pair of electrons right it takes a lot of energy right and then i have 2p Is that right 2px, 2py, and 2pz. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah, that's right. That too is horrible. Sorry about that. I'm trying to write on my iPad screen and it's kind of sticky. So, how many electrons? Two. Two. One here and one here. Is that right? Nothing in 2pz. Right. So, tell me based on this. How many bonds should carbon be able to form? Um, two. You should only be able to form two bonds if you only got two unpaired electrons in the valence shell. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. But in all of our examples, carbon had four bonds to it, didn't it? Right. Yeah. So now we got to find a way to explain that. So the way to explain it is through what we call, hopefully you watched that video that I sent, is through, through what we call hybridization. Let me, let me get my spelling right. So that's that, that process of hybridization is the addition of orbitals, right? A hybridization is part of valence bond theory, right? Talking about orbitals overlapping and things like that. So if we add orbitals together, then we're gonna get hybrid. So let me show you what I mean, right? How many of you are animal science? Anybody? Me. Me. Okay. If you took a pit bull and a boxer and you bred them, what would you get? A hybrid. A hybrid animal, right? The puppy is not gonna be fully pit or fully, yeah, yeah. you understand what I'm saying? If you took a, a, a black dad and a white mom and they had a baby, what you what would you get? A mixed child. Mix, a mixed baby, right? That's what hybridization is. All of us are hybrids of our parents, right? So <laughs> here's the thing. So let's say I have an S orbital. And then I'm going to react. I want to add that, not react. It's not a reaction. I want to add that to a P orbital. You following? Now, the P orbital itself is shaded for a reason. Can somebody tell me why? What's, a, what, what's the definition of an orbital again? Uh, to show the path of an electron. It's a, it's a graph of the path of the electron. Is that right? Right. And if we're talking about graphing on a Cartesian plane, right, there's a place on that plane where the electron is going to pass through zero. Are you following? Or the graph is going to pass through zero. And so that's what that red line is. That, that P orbital is separated into two lobes, one of them on the positive side of the plane and one on the negative side of the plane. And the electron can be in either side, but it can't be here in the middle because 
that's what you call a node. So I'm gonna try to make that dot a little bigger. I mean, I wanna fix this so at least looks right. All right, so now you're gonna have a node right here in the middle between the two loads. And the two loads are the same size as my drawing pad. Let's see if I can get that right too. I don't need, I don't need any confusion on this part. That's better. All right. So at the at the node, no electrons can be there. It's like a no man's land. But the electrons can be on either side of that load, in, in either load, but they can't be at the at the node where the two loads meet, because that's where the graph crosses zero. So there's no electron density right there. Following? Yes. All right, so both of these are equations, yes? Yes. All right. So if I add them together and shade, this is shaded. What that means is that shaded, we're going to use not as a place, not as a designation for where the electrons are, but the sign of the equation. So if I add it together, what should happen to the two shaded pieces when I add them? Should they increase or decrease? Increase. They should increase. So in my hybrid, <clears throat> what's going to happen is going to look like this, right? And this part is going to be shaded. Right? That's what a hybrid orbital is going to look like. For human beings or for animals, it's going to depend on what the dominant genes are when, when the two species come together and they made and have a baby, if depending on which gene is dominant, you know, that's what you're going to see. But for chemistry, it's all based on the sign of the equation. So since the, <laughs> the, the S orbital and the P orbital, the top lobe has the same sign as the S, when they add together, it's going to be constructive. So you'll get more of that and less of the other side. Yes or no? Yes. All right. So now we got that out of the way. Let's go back up here. So the electrons will stay more to the positive side? No. They'll still be they'll be able to go anywhere they want to go. Okay. It's just that the pot the, the lobe is bigger there because of the uh the fact that those two equations had the same sign. That's all that means. Okay. But the electrons can be anywhere above or below the node. It doesn't matter. That's a great question though. All right, so how, how, how do you, so let's go back to the electron configuration. So in the second energy level, I got a 2s and three 2p orbitals. You follow me? What can I do? Can I add those together? I mean, they are equations and they're in the same energy level, right? So, but I, what I'm, the point I'm trying to make is, <clears throat> how can I how can I justify carbon making four bonds if it only has two unpaired electrons? We got to be able to explain that, right? That's the that was the original point of the question. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. So what would you do? What do I need to do? Let's think about that. I need an electron in PZ, don't I? Yeah. Mm. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. You need one electron in PZ. And the other thing I need is for, for all four of those electrons in that valence shell and the highest energy shell uh, to be unpaired. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So the way you do that is through what we call hybridization, which I said up here was, where did I put it or did I erase it? I think I erased it. Oh, no, it's right here. So I need to add those orbitals together. That's all I'm getting ready to do. So if I took the S orbital, which is here, and I added it to the three P orbitals, are you following me? How many hybrids should I get if I added everything together? Two SP3. How many? Two SP3. Okay, let's, let's think about that. You're right in the sense that it will be a SP3 hybrid, but if I, <laughs> if I have four atomic orbitals, right? That's the number of hybrids I get is going to be equivalent to that. 
So I should get four SP3 hybrids. Are you following that? Mm -hmm. So I should get a... I should get four hybrids because I added the two S and all three of the P's together, right? So I should get four hybrids from that. And each one of those hybrids is gonna have one electron. Now, now can we justify carbon making four bonds? Yeah. Yeah, we got four unpaired electrons that can overlap with some other atoms, is that right? Oh. Yep. Yep, so here's the, here's the thing about hybridization. It doesn't stop at SP3. What if I, because we got to also be able to justify where those pi bonds come from. So we're going to talk about that. Got plenty of time too. Uh, so what if I took the 2S and then I added two of the two Ps to it? How many hybrids should I get? Think about it. I, I'm, I'm adding three orbitals together. How many hybrids should I get? It should be a, the equivalent, right? I should get three hybrids. If I add together three atomic orbitals, then it should give me three hybrid orbitals. Are you following that? Yes. All right. So I should get a, I'm going to call it an SP2 and I'll explain why in a minute. And then P. If I only added the S and two of the P's, one of the P's stays unhybridized. And I'm, I'm, I'm gonna explain that in a minute. So that's unhybridized. Is that okay? We, could, we cool so far? Yes. Okay. I mean, what, what about the electrons? How do I distribute them? Should it, should it be the same? It's yes. always going to be the same, right? Because I'm trying to do what? I'm trying to justify how those four bonds are formed. Yes, no? Yes. Right, so there's one other scenario <clears throat> for hybridization. If I took one S and one P, so one, a two S orbital, and then two PX, if I just added those two together, how many hybrids should I get? Two. two hybrids. And then what about the other two P's? They just don't, they don't get touched, right? Right. All right, so let's see what that looks like. So here, this would be, I only added one S and one P, so I'm gonna call it SP. Boom, boom, P, P, Y, and then. So that's P, Y, and then this is P, Z, and then each one of them has one electron. Yes or no? And both of these P's out here are Unhybridized. A any questions about this before we move on to, some, to uh, the application of it? Dr. Russell, can you go back over? What, this what, what part? Uh, um, the like you had me at the the addition part, and the then after, I don't know if it's because it's in the same color. Like then I got confused. Okay, so <clears throat> so the the top. Let's look at the top right here. Right. So what I did with that first hybridization state is I took the S and all three P's and I mixed them. Right. And since I have the S and three P's, that's a four, that's four total atomic orbitals that I'm mixing together. Right. Uh -huh. And so because of that, I'm going to get four hybrids. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to get four hybrids. And okay. So, so it's like if I took my dog and I, 
I know this is crazy. It's going to sound crazy. But I took my dog and I made it my dog and three other dogs uh -huh. all together at the same time. I would that the puppy will come out with, in theory, traits from all all four of those dogs. Okay. So what I did was I added the S and all three P's, and so my hybrids had have, have traits of all four of those orbitals. That's why I get four of them. Okay. Yeah. And then the unhybrid. Yeah. So that's okay. in the that's the next hybridization state. So if I take the okay. S. And then I take two of the P orbitals out of the three and mix them together. I've mixed three at atomic orbitals. <laughs> okay. And so I should get three hybrids. Are you following? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's what. And now uh, at the same time. Okay. Right, what's the no part? It's like after I don't know. Okay, I understand, you know, the four hybrids. I get that. And then you take the SP2. That's why I'm confused. Where did okay. you get the SP2? So where did the SP2 come from? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. So uh -huh. if I take one S, I got three Ps, right, to choose from. Right. But I'm only going to use two of them. Okay. To add the S. Okay. That's what the two means. I added one S and two Ps together. And the other P is just unhybridized. It's untouched. Okay, okay, okay. I get so it. I get it. Right. If I take three atomic orbitals, I'm going to get three hybrids. Right. And those hybrids are going to be SP2 because I added one S and two Ps together. Okay. I'm, I'm with you now. All right. And it's the same thing for the next hybridization state. Right? Right here. What did I add together here? I added one S and one P. So that's two atomic orbitals. It's going to give me two hybrids. And then the other two P orbitals are untouched. But I still get a total of four orbitals. Are you following? That I can work with. Yeah, okay. I just had got confused in that one part right okay. there. But you got it now. Yeah, I get it now. So, so, how, how, so how do I put this? Carbon has three hybridization states that it can adopt, right? One of them is what we call SP3. Then we have SP2, and then we have SP. Those are your three hybridization states. I got a question. Go ahead. Um, okay, so you said, I understand that like when you have like four um, atomic orbitals. I forgot the word you use after atomic orbital. Yes, mm -hmm. four atomic orbitals, you'll make four hybrid orbitals. Mm -hmm. So if it's like, individually four but then it makes four more even though they mix together does it take like a little piece from the four atomic ones to like make four more like mixed ones like i don't get how you get from four individual to even four more if they mix together right so when i by mixing what i mean is let me say it like this <clears throat> you're not it's not like making gumbo right where you put everything into a pot so you have the 2S, right? And uh -huh. it can add to the 2PX, and that'll give you one. It can add to the 2PY, that can give you one. 2PZ, that, you understand what I'm saying? So the S and the P's can, can add, because they're all equations, but the fact that there are four of those orbitals, when you mix them together, they're gonna give you, by default, you have to, the number of hybrids has to equal to the number of atomic orbitals that you start with. Okay. But it's only gonna be those four. Now you're not gonna get eight. Cause I think it sounds like what you were saying was like, you mix them and then you take the hybrids and you mix them again. Nah, I meant only like one time, but. Yeah. I, yeah. But you're, but you're mixing the S and, and each of the three P's. So that's why you get four hybrids. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think I got to sleep on it a little bit and then it'll click. That's okay. But re always remember the number of hybrids is going to be equivalent to the number of atomic orbitals you, you added together. So I, I, think in, I think I heard what you said too is that is each hybrid going to take a little piece of each one of the four? Is that what you're asking? Yes. Yeah, you can think about it like that. Yes. Okay. 
that's good. That might make it click. Each, so each hybrid is like a baby, right? With a little yeah. characteristics from each one of the four uh, atomic orbitals you added together. Yes. Right? And then once you add them together, you redistribute those electrons so that each orbital gets one electron. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. So, so the three, write this down somewhere. Your three hybridization states for carbon are sp3, sp2, and sp. Is that that good? Any any question? Any other other questions? And those were what again? I'm sorry. The sp3, sp2, and sp. The hybridization states. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna write it down. I'm gonna write it down down here. Uh, let me get the empty space. Boom, right there. So I'm gonna say that carbon has three hybridization states. Right, sp3, sp2, and then sp. And that two looks bad. Let me fix that. That's not a question mark. So sp3, sp2, and so every carbon in any molecule is gonna fit one of these three hybridization states. Are you following that? Yes. So so let me let me let let me go back up to the top where we were because we're gonna apply this now. This chart that keeps dropping out. We're going to apply it to the examples that we had up top. Right, so let's go to this carbon right here. <clears throat> so a carbon like this one that has four sigma bonds, remember we said sigma bonds and pi bonds, you following? If it's got four sigma bonds, then it's going to be what we call, it's going to fall into the sp3 category. Right, it's gonna fall into, <coughs> excuse me, the SP3 category. So what that looks like is, I'm gonna erase that. Dr. Russell? Yes. So you're saying that the, the bonds are always one more than the orbital, right? Not, well, no, because it's always four bonds. Four, okay. But the number of groups, you can say it that way. Groups, yeah. But the number of groups around it can be whatever that, a superscript is plus one. Yes, you can say that. I think, does that answer your question? Yes. Mm -hmm. So if it's SP3 hybridized, what it's going to look like is something like this, right? Yeah, this is my carbon, and then this is a hybrid here. And I have another hybrid here. And I have another hybrid here. And then I have a hybrid here. Right, so it's gonna the shape of it is gonna be a tetrahedral. So if it's sp3 hybridized, it's gonna be tetrahedral in shape. It's gonna have a 109.5 bond angle, and it's gonna have four groups. It's gonna have four groups. That's those are the characteristics of any atom that's sp3 hybridized. It's gonna be tetrahedral. It's gonna have a 109.5 bond angle or something close to that. And it's gonna have four groups around. It. So all the SP orbitals look like that? Like they have the big side and- Big side and the small side, yes. Okay. Because remember what we did, we added an S and a P together. And so if the S, if the S is shaded and the top lobe of P is shaded, that's gonna get bigger when you add it together or if the S is unshaded and the lobe, uh, the, the uh, P lobe is unshaded when you add it, that's gonna get bigger. So it just depends. Okay. But yes, you all, it, it's gonna be asymmetrical or unsymmetrical because of the, the fact that the P has two sides to it, a positive side and a negative side. Any, any questions about that?
No? All right. <laughs> Let's look at the other example that we did. <clears throat> right, what do you think here? This is definitely not SP3, right? Let me erase some of this stuff over here. It's not SP3. How many sigma bonds do you do I have here? Uh, five. Three. Yeah. Three. Sigma three. I heard somebody said three, right? So let, let me let me make a point about the sigma bonds. Sigma bonds come from hybrid overlap. So any sigma bond is gonna come is gonna be the result of hybrid overlap. Right, any sigma bond is gonna be the result of hybrid overlap. So if I got three sigma bonds, let's see if we can use some reasoning here. How many hybrids should I have? If I got an atom that has three sigma bonds to it. Three. Three hybrids, right? Which one of our hybridization states has three hybrids in it? Uh, SP2. SP2, SP good, very good. So this, a carbon like this is gonna fall under SP2, right? Let me show you the characteristics. I'm gonna erase a lot of this stuff. So it's got, it's got four bonds to it always, but it only, it has three groups. So one, we're, gonna, we're looking at this carbon here. So it's got one, two, three things attached to it. Yes or no? Yes. So a SP2 hybridized carbon is going to have three groups, right? It's going to have a 120 degree bond angle and it's going to be what we call trigonal. Right? Can't, let me box this in so you don't get it confused with something else. It's going to be what we call trigonal. Can you see the triangle here? Let me show you. Can you see the triangle? Ah, that's too bright. Sorry. I have a question. Go ahead. So when you're um, looking for hybridization, like, you know, just viewing the geometry or whatever, you just focus on the sigma bonds? Well, like, you could, you could, or you can focus on the easiest way to, to identify it quickly is to focus on the groups. Okay. Right? If it has three groups around it, then you know it's going to be SP2. Mm -hmm. If it has four groups around it, then you know that it's going to be SP3. Okay, thank you. That's all I want. Yeah, good question. All right. Is this making sense? Somewhat? It is. So it's trigonal, it's got a 120 degree bond angle, and it's got three groups around it. If it falls in, if it fits that description, <clears throat> then it's gonna be sp2. So any carbon, let me give you another uh, way to think about it. Any carbon with a double bond to it, it's gonna be sp2 hybridized. So if you see a double bond, you can immediately know the hybridization state. Is that okay? Can you repeat that? Yeah, any carbon with a double bond is going to be sp2 hybridized. And we do know that, that a double bond is what? One sigma and one pi bond. Is that right? Yes. Yes. All right. So for the, the top example, we said it was sp3. Got four groups around it, tetrahedral geometry, 109.5 uh, bond angle. This group, this carbon, right, this uh, molecule here, the carbon that we have circled in purple, we said it was sp2. What about the other side? Is that also sp2? Yes. It is. We didn't talk about the pi bond. So <clears throat> if a carbon is sp2 hybridized, what do we know about it? On, on, from an electronic standpoint. How many hybrids did we say it has? Two. 
Think about that. Three. Three hybrids. The two means I took the S and two P's and put them together to give me three hybrids, right? So what about the unhybridized P? Do we just forget about that? No. We can't, right? Nothing ever disappears in chemistry. You always have to account for everything. <laughs> so the pi bond, that's where my P uh, orbitals come into play. So we said the sigma bond is a, is a result of hybrid overlap. The pi bond is a result of unhybridized P overlap. Write that down somewhere in your, in your uh, notes. So pi bonds, Man, this screen is sticky. I'm gonna show you an example too, uh, just to make it make sense. <laughs> so pi bonds come from unhybridized P over that. But that's how you share electrons in organic is by overlapping orbitals, right? That's that's the, the premise that we're working off of. All right? So that's where my fourth bond is going to come from. Because the Dr. People, Russell. Yeah. I'm sorry. Can you uh, read out? Because I can't really see it when you said the pi bonds. Yeah, so, so the pi bonds come from unhybridized P overlap. And then sigma bonds come from hybrid orbital overlap. So that's how this car, this sp2 carbon can still make four bonds. Three of those bonds are going to be sigma bonds, and then one of them is going to be a pi bond. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So let me show you. Let me show you an example of that, kind of pictorially, if I can get down into a blank spot. So <clears throat> a carbon that's sp2 is going to have three hybrids. Right, can you see that triangle shape? Right here. That's why it's going to be, that's why it's triggered. All right, we're following that? Yes. And then the unhybridized P orbital is going to be here, perpendicular to the plane. So this, everything is flat. This other, this, these three P orbitals, they're flat like this in this triangular shape, and then you got the P orbital kind of sticking up, one lobe at the top and one lobe underneath. Dr. Russell. Go ahead. Is this SP2? Yes, this is for SP2. All right, so it's a trigonal geometry. It's got three, three groups around it, <clears throat> and it has three hybrids and then one unhybridized P orbital. Right, so when that overlaps, let me sh just show this and then we'll stop because we only got two minutes left. When that overlaps, let me see. Right, so this Uh-oh. Never mind. I'll just redraw it. So when that overlaps with another, another carbon like itself, like that, that's a hybrid, that's a hybrid, and then that's a hybrid. And then it's also gonna have the same unhybridized P orbital here, right? The, the sigma bond is gonna come right here where those two orbitals overlap and share electrons. So this is gonna be sigma overlap. And then the pi bond is gonna come here. when the two unhybridized P orbitals overlap and share electrons. And yes, before you ask, yes, the bottom part does overlap as well. Those P's overlap, overlap also. Just, any questions? All right. No questions. Wait, can you go back to your screen real quick? Yeah. Thank you. 
one second. Right? Are there any questions about what, where the hybrids come from? Where do they come from again? A hybrid orbital? What's, what, what's the hybrid orbital or result of? Sigma bond overlap. Well, no, you get sigma bonds from hybrids, but what's the hybrid itself? Where does it come from? Adding other orbitals. Adding orbitals together. You add a S, and in carbon's case, you add a S and a P together to give a SP hybrid. All right. Oh, I have a question about the um, like the assignments that we have to print off. Mm -hmm. Should we start those today? Well, I had one of the worksheets loaded up. We just didn't get to it. So go ahead and pull this worksheet right here where it says 320 in, in Blackboard. Let me stop. Can I stop sharing so I can pull up Blackboard real quick? Yes. All right. So we're going to go to Blackboard. And we'll pull that up real quick. I'll show you exactly which handout we're going to be working off of for the next couple of days. Come on. All right. So we are in module, the first module right here. So if you, if you go to Blackboard, <clears throat> click on first module, you'll see that. I had to name them like that because when I tried to import it with the numbers, it, it just really, it was really screwed up. So by now you can already, you should already have taken the pre-assessment. Uh, if you haven't, that's the wrong module. If you haven't, you can take it over the weekend, take the pre-assessment. And then the assignments are here. And this is what, this is the handout we're going to be working on for. That first module one combo one, and we're going to work through that. So that first test on the 26th is going to have some of this. And it's also going to have, if we get to module 1A, which I'm praying that we do, it's going to have some of that on there too. All right, so this is the handout that you need. And we're going to talk about, when we, talk, when we do these problems, we're going to talk about the concepts associated with them. So Because I don't want to just go down a checklist and say, okay, we talked about uh, formal charge, we talked about this. But, all this stuff, like like right here, you have these condensed formulas. We're going to turn them into skeletal form. We're going to do all that just based on that one problem. And that way, we kind of kill all those birds at the same time. Yeah, because, like, the concepts make sense by themselves. It's just putting them together. That's yes, the and that's the goal. That's my goal is to teach you how to synthesize the concepts so that when you see an example, you're thinking in terms of, okay, when you read the question, you already know, boom, okay, let me do this, this, and this, because that's, those are the things that apply to this example. That's the goal. All right. So we're going we're gonna to pick this, the assignment up on Monday, because we've already discussed hybridization, and I wanted to get through hybridization before we started doing anything else. So we're going to pick this up on Monday. So we're going to start at 164. All the highlighted problems, we're going to work through them. And then after that, we should do the post. Post assessment. Yeah, you do that. Well, you do that before the exam. Sure. Okay. Yeah. But all this, this handout right here, if we can work through this and, and understand it, I promise you, you're going to be good. Because this is all your foundation. Skeletal forms, condensed forms, formal charge, uh, polar covalent, non-polar covalent, all of those things. If we get that foundation, you're going to be straight for the rest of the class. And resonance. We'll do resonance in the next module, though, not in this one. So is there anything that's to do, like, by Monday, or we just got to, like, review? I'll just do the pre-assessment. Okay. Yeah, because on Monday, on, I'll, and, and look over, start reading through those sections in that syllabus that, that pertain to the information that we're doing now. That way, on Monday, when you come back, we're just going to have this handout on the screen, and we're just going to hammer away at it. Okay. It's going, and it's going to be a discussion, right? Not a, not a lecture. Yes. 
Um, so I went to the bookstore to try to find that organic chemistry book. Mm-hmm. And um, so I talked to them and they said they haven't got a request from you to order it for the bookstore. Okay, so here's my suggestion, because they do the same thing every semester and they always say the same thing. Even when we send the orders in, they say they don't give. My suggestion, buy from somewhere else. Okay. Yeah, unless you're using a book voucher, then mm-hmm. I can, on the back end, I'll send the request, but I already we already sent oh. the numbers in. We sent the numbers in this summer. So I talked to him, they said, yeah, um, he never sent it in, but you know, they just had to send it in personally for me. So my book's gonna come through my book voucher. Okay. But they just wanted to talk to you about that. Like, are you gonna- They always wanna talk to me. I know. But, okay. but, but they, but even when we submit our book numbers, they know they always say they didn't get it. So, okay. Yeah, but so, I'll, I'll square that up. I'll send it in. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, thank you for letting me know that too. Yeah, no problem. Um, when are the um the Quiz- quizzes for the YouTube videos due? After you watch the video. So as soon as you watch <laughs> the YouTube videos that I sent out. You should be able to, let me, let me see, let me pull a quiz up and see what's on it. That's the beauty of virtual learning, right? You get to cheat. Let me see what's on here. Yeah, so electron configuration, double bond, what's double bond, hybridization, uh, how bonds uh, are formed, right? It's hybridization. So you can take this quiz right now. Because the first set of videos I sent you, one was introductory and the other one was over hybridization. So you should be able to go in right now and make a hundred on this quiz, especially after today. Okay, so there's no deadline to watch the videos or, or take the quiz? You need a deadline? No, I just wanted to know. I didn't want it to disappear or anything. It's not going to disappear until after the exam. Okay. Every, everything will stay open up until we take the exam and I'm taking it down. And I'm okay. doing that on purpose because I don't want you to wait until October to go back and try to do this first stuff. Right. The goal is to do it while it's fresh. Watch the video and then as soon as it ends, go take the quiz on Blackboard. Okay. And you said the exam okay, You're cutting out a little bit. Say that again completely virtual class now yes they had to change they had to switch it over because they couldn't find a room for us to meet in okay with with proper distancing and plus armstrong has no air so i'm not going in there with no air or ventilation they still don't have air is that huh they still don't have air in armstrong I haven't been, they haven't updated me on whether or not they fixed the AC. They got some portable units in there. Mm-mm. But the overall, the, the big unit, I don't think it's repaired yet. And Dr. Russell, are you, um, when are you starting your office hours? Like whenever, now? whenever you need whenever, to. Okay. Yeah, if you have a question, just shoot me an email and say, can we Zoom, blah, blah, blah time. If it's open, okay. I'm good. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. And you know, because this is virtual now, don't be afraid to send me an email with a screenshot of a problem or something, because I can take that, annotate it on my iPad and send it right back to you. And I promise you, I know virtual learning is not for everybody, because some people need to be in a classroom setting, sitting down. So if you ever have questions, just send me an email. I, did I, put, I think I put my number in the chat the other day. <clears throat> send me an email, send me a text, whatever, and I promise you I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Yep. So are there any other questions? And make sure you check the announcements that I send and make sure you read the whole announcement because it's always, I try to line, just lay stuff out so you don't have to guess about stuff. <laughs> so check check those announcements. And if don't just read the title or the first sentence, because sometimes you open it up, it's going to be some bullet points in there to help make sure you stay on track. All right, any questions about anything? 
The exam is on the 26th, correct? Indeed. The 26th of this month. Wherever we are at that point, that's what's going to be on the exam. So now you know it, you know right off the break that hybridization is going to be on the exam. When we start on Monday and start working through this handout, the concepts that we hit, those are going to be the same concepts that's in that first module. And then when we get to the second, the next module, the concepts we hit, that's what's going to be on the exam from that module. And I can't stress enough, watch the videos. I know it's, some of them are boring when we get to functional groups. I, that was when I first started making these things. So they're boring. I ain't gonna lie. Some of them got music, some don't. But the information, just stick to the information. Forget, the, forget about the boredom. They get better as, you, as we go along. All right. I just wanted to say good job on the carbon video because I was laughing. That was funny. And I understood Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I'm glad. That's the, that's the key. If you understood it, you just made my day. So that's a blessing. All right. Anything else before we log out for the weekend? No? All right. Cool. So thank, thank you all for being here. And giving your attention and time. I know it's a lot with so many people. And if you are on mute the whole time, when we come back on Monday, don't hesitate to ask questions. Don't don't sit at wherever you are and not ask questions if you got questions. Because this is a discussion, it's not a lecture. All right. So I'll see y'all on Monday. Get that first handout. It's, it's in the assignments tab on Blackboard under first module. Everything you need is right there. Bye. Have a nice day. All righty. Thank you. Have a good bye one. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a good weekend. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, hey, Dr. Russell. Yeah, man. Yeah, you get my email? Uh, no, but I'm about to check now. Okay, but for sure. Yeah, I'm about to, I'm about to go and check my emails now once I log off. I bet. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just shoot me an email, I guess. Okay, I'll respond back to you. All right, Beth, for sure. Thanks, man. All right, appreciate you. Yep, no doubt.